They just go by the nose. And the tongue. Three patapashu is called two legged animal. That's the unfortunate condition. Now, if the intelligence is connected only with the food, only with the eating, with the sniffing, then you call that NSA. You know what's NSA? Anybody of you knows? Good for you. You don't read the newspapers. National Security Agency. They're the ones who listen to your phone calls when you make a phone call. When you send a letter. Hey, mommy, I really miss you. Somebody reads it in the NSA. You know that? Of course, they won't read that. They have a scanning system to know whether they want to really know, read what you're writing about. If you write something about, I tell you, if you mention the word Trump, immediately you go into the top security session. Does anybody want to harm me? Like that, you know? NSA, it's all computers. It's a, like a logo, uh, like a, a system, like a Google, which selects everything according to what you write and what is it there. And even, you know, what you say, your voice is recorded when you are on the phone. What do you think about that, Giri Maharaj? When you call, not only Parmadala Maharaj knows, Mr. Trump also knows <laughs> what Giri Maharaj is not a folk. That is what Mr. Snowden revealed to the world. That was one of the biggest scandals. They actually copy everything the world is speaking. Even the private talks of the presidents of foreign countries, they also recorded. So, these are the two-legged animals. They're just sniffing. What they're sniffing about, is somebody there who wants to take my food away? Is somebody there who wants to, who wants to uh, give me some pleasure, or can I get some pleasure from them? Now, you may ask a question, that's political. How can there be illegal drug, drug trades if they know every telephone call? They could immediately go and send the police after all the people who have to do with drugs. But apparently that's not in their interest. How many things are not in their interest? Uncover illegal arm deals. It's not in the interest. And so many illegal things are not in the interest of the sniffing dogs. They're in our interest. We are interested that there's no alcohol, no drugs. We are interested that uh, there's no illegal arm deals because we don't want the effects. We don't want a side effect. You know, what is the best client? The best client you have in this world is, who, who knows what's the best client? Please help me. Come on. Huh? The one who spends a lot of money. Yeah, but why he spends a lot of money? That's the addict. He's the best client. He comes back every day. So you have to get people addicted. So the society of the of the two-legged animals, they love addictions. Because that's where they make their money. And lust, anger, greed, that's also an addiction. Television, football is an addiction. Sugar, cigarettes, alcohol is an addiction. Heroin is addiction. Facebook is an addiction. You have so many addictions to get people hooked 
all the addictions and then take them out. And then for those who you cannot get, then you or for everybody you also put put the vat put the vat value added tax, mehr wert steuer that you also put on top of everybody. But really the system of this material world is that my profit is your damage. And that's not the original law. That's against the original law. The original law is your profit is my profit. Your health is my wealth. It's exactly opposite. But our society, they make people sick on purpose. That's the best business, sick people. I need this medicine, I need this medicine. I need this operation, I need this. It's a huge business. Anyhow, we're getting sidetracked. This is Nityananda Prabhu's day. And he is the top representative of the true values of the original law and the real truth. And you, as a student, have to be takshradana namudayo. You have to be very seriously inquisitive. And you have to put your faith. When and where do you have to put your faith? This is Oida therapy lesson. When and where you have to put your faith. When it's reasonable, my friend, we are following a reasonable face. I give you a plate of food. They say, come, eat with me. So you accept the invitation to put your face in my food. I could be Hiranya Kashyapu, who wants to kill for a lot. But you put your face in, come with me, you go. Reasonable face accompanies us all of our life. And sometimes unreasonable face also. But this is distorted face, partial face. That is a disturbance. Like people following an idiot and going into a war. That's a very disturbing face. So, you shouldn't have blind face and you shouldn't have distorted face. You should have your face as a reasonable way. And reasonable face, that is what you may say it's based on common sense. Unfortunately, today we say common sense, the least common of the senses. So apparently there aren't so much common sense around anyway. But still, I need my common sense. I cannot do without my common sense. I cannot and you cannot. Common sense, if your camera doesn't work, most likely the battery is empty. That may not be the only reason. Maybe something else is wrong in the camera, maybe it's broke. But common sense, first thing is check the battery. The car is not running. Common sense, put gas into it. <laughs> Without gas, it doesn't run. Okay, but it doesn't mean that with gas it must run. There may be other things wrong with the car. Many things can go wrong with the car, so you have to fight with your common sense. Hey, what's wrong here? That question is the number one question in life. What's wrong here? Of course, you can also ask what's right here. That's very bright. Those who ask for the right, they are bright. Those who ask for the wrong, at least they have a common sense to defend themselves to the downfall and to the degradation. But if you don't ask what's right and you don't ask what's wrong, well, you end up doomed. Doomed in the world of illusion. So, we 
are here quite, quite covered, covered in this illusion. And only Nityananda Prabhu can take us out. That's why we celebrate him so much. Nitai, 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 Nitai Gaur, Nitai Gaur, Doya Nitai, Doya Nitai, merciful, most merciful Nityananda, most merciful Nityananda. Why? Why we glorify him like this? Because without Nityananda, we are doomed. And what means Nityananda, my friend? Nitya, uh, eternal, and Ananda, happiness. Everybody, anything which draws you away from eternal happiness, he is some Tripata Pashu. He's a two-legged animal. He doesn't know what the human form of life is all about. He doesn't know. He's unaware. So Nityananda is the one who is the guarantor of eternal happiness. And he says, you can also get it, you can also understand it, but be seriously inquisitive, Shraddha Dandaya. That means seriously inquisitive, put your face, your reasonable face in the good instruction and do it. If you don't do it, if you're like all hippie, you know, I don't know, I don't care, no, no me importa. Huh? I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> you have one of these, one of these uh, stupid uh, conformist mentalities where you just go by your slavery instincts and your addictions and you say, I don't know, I don't know. Huh? I would like to, but uh, in, in South America we have many jokes about that. One is in Colombia, say that he's divided. Huh? He's, he's, he's doing nothing. Huh? Another one is that the Mexicans, they say, I have such a big desire. You know, I really want to do the right thing inside. I'm really ready, you know, to turn it up. But I'm a macho Mexican. <laughs> so therefore, even though I really want to do it, I control myself. I restrain myself. I don't go into this foolish demand of my higher intellect and my soul. <laughs> it sounds funny in Spanish, but in the translation it's not so not so funny anymore. No? But uh, like mm, In English you say, it's folly to be wise when ignorance is bliss. And in German, Wilhelm Busch wrote, Wenn einer, der mit Mühe kaum geklettert ist auf einen Baum, schon denkt, dass er ein Vogel wäre, so irrt sich der. Hm? Everybody has some kind of madness in this world. You think you became the great guy, so you can do anything. You are independent now. No, you are 100% depending on Nityananda. Each and every one of us is depending on Nityananda. You are depending on air. You are depending on water. You are depending on food. You remember the three important things. And you expect highest quality in this. No air, problem has to be attended. No water, problem has to be attended. No food, problem has to be attended. But no Nityananda, problem, but you don't attend it. That is the point here. Nityananda is the more important than air. Because you can die, then you get another body, and then you die again, you get another body, you die again, you get water, you don't get water, you die, so what? Death is nothing. <laughs> Every second billions of people die. What is the big story of dying? The, the story is of finding Nityananda. That is the real issue. 
That's what life is all about. So we have Nityananda Toyonishi today is, is, not a, is not a celebration of going to a temple and looking at an arctic and giving five, 500 rupees and taking prasad. No. Nityananda is not that cheap. You have to go and fight and stay with him and give your life. Not give a little donation and go back and then no more Nityananda. No, it doesn't work that way. That's a problem. We want the cheap one, no? We want the imitation Nityananda. And what is the imitation Nityananda? Whiskey. Ananda? Actually, they have, they have a, a, a whiskey in South America, in, in Colombia. It's called Nectar. Huh? <laughs> So you're supposed to drink it and you get nectarized. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? So there's so much so much stop, stupid things, you know. So Ananda, and actually also I think in India some people call wine Ananda. So you get Ananda. Can you bring some Ananda when you come from the market? Huh? So you can buy Ananda? It's not possible, my dear. You cannot buy samadhi. <laughs> you cannot buy anything. You cannot buy health. You cannot buy happiness. You cannot buy love. You cannot buy security. When you're supposed to be killed, you will be killed. If you're safe, nobody can kill you. So don't worry about it. It's going to happen anyway. Death will be delivered free of charge. So don't worry about it. Neither procure it nor try to avoid it. Just fight Nityananda. But you have all your time to supposedly avoid death, avoid boringness, avoid the. They have camel races. And they bet on the camels. But there has to be somebody sitting on the camel, which is like, what do you call it, the, the, the hinet, the, the, the camel driver. Because without the camel driver, then it's not a camel race. So what do they do? They buy children on the market, because the more, the more light the camel driver, the most biggest the chance that that they will win. You can't run, you know. So they put babies, three, four, five, six years old, little kids, and they tie them on the camel. They are slaves. They buy them in India. And they're making the big, oh, the big, uh, Saudi Arabian camel races and the television is there. And their babies are there, slaves, and they die. You never hear the name of the one who's sitting up there. You don't see them, they're all covered. This is what's going on in this world. Torturing children. I mean, the, the list is no ending of the madness what's happening in this material world. This is what we go, what goes by civilization. We're not in a civilized world. That's why they asked Mahatma Gandhi what he thought about Western civilization. He said, civilizing the West would be a good idea. And anybody who's really participating in the, in the fast food industry, the animal factories, he's not civilized. He's a brute. This is very painful, but it's very true. Our world is, like if you ask me, my opinion is that Mr. Trump is a reaction for the world for the way we treat the animals. We gotta be treated like Mr. Trump wants to treat people. Uh, 
because that's the way we treat the animals. Like everybody complains, what? He wants to make a wall between Mexico and the United States. What a brute. But what, is, what are you doing with the animals? They all confined in wars. Not only in wars. At least Mr. Trump leaves space on that side of space on this side. Our animals are confined in boxes. They can't even turn around. They live the whole life there until the slaughter man comes. Oh, he's fed enough. Off, kill him. What is this? This is, is unheard of. It, it is sad. You know, we are supposed to be more civilized. We are supposed to have learned from the wars before, first war, second war, 30 year war of Christian war, all that. We're supposed to have learned something. But by numbers, never before in the history of mankind, as many animals were tortured on this planet as today. And tortured from birth to death. No, the animals don't get a moment of relax. And then we take one animal and keep it as a pet. Oh yes, my little darling dog. Human beings are very strange fellows. They're really, really <laughs> dangerous, strange fellows. Hmm? can rely on them because they're disconnected from Nityananda. That's why. They have disconnected themselves from Nityananda and they're not seriously inquisitive about all these things. And therefore they don't know. They don't know what they're missing. That's why Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda came to this world to save us. Nityananda Sahodi told Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. They together came like the sun and the moon. They have arisen on the horizon of Goda to dissipate the darkness from this material world. So Nityananda, he came like you could say, free of charge. He went to Jagai Mada and said, hey, my friends, brothers, you stop this drinking and you stop this nonsense and you chant Hare Krishna and you'll be fine. They said, what? They were drunkards, you know. Drunkards, they get really, uh, hey, you say another word and I cut your head. <laughs> Brother, I'm talking about your welfare. I'm talking about your eternal welfare, about your Nityananda. And that's why you should stop the hey, give this guy a look. <laughs> so this way, no? So they went up there and wanted to beat Nityananda and Haridas. So they had to run away. And they went up to Lord Guranga, they said, Well, we tried to preach to Jagai Madai today, it didn't go too well. They wanted to beat us. We had to run away. Sometimes this happens to our preachers. <laughs> Sometimes our preachers are going out in the world and people want to beat them. In Germany, even worse. Jai Gora, he was sitting in the temple. I rented the temple it's many years ago. And it was a storefront with window. And we made a beautiful altar you could see from the street. And so Jai Gora is a very serious devotee, so he, he was chanting his rounds very soon. And then what you do when you finish the round, you touch your japa beads to the front and you say, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadana Sri Vasadi Gora Bhaktavinda. And some devotees, when they do that, they offer obeisances also. <laughs> like after every round they go down. So Jai Gora was chanting in front of, of, the, of the altar, right in Berlin, in the heart of town. And when he, he just bowed down, a bullet burst through the, 
through the window from outside and hit his head. Well, it didn't hit his head because his head just went down. So for paying obeisances, his life was saved and the car went off where the, where the guy who wanted to kill the devotee uh, ran off. So sometimes our devotees not only get get beaten, they're in, in very dangerous position in Russia. People have been killed for chanting Hare Krishna and many, many, I mean there's Ladini and and there is Padmarani. Padmarani, my dear daughter, she just died a few weeks ago, also being killed by a bullet. So <coughs> it's not only joking, you know. Actually, I wanted to make this special mentioning of Padmarani, which she left to this world to go to Krishna, fortunately, but in, a, in such a condition as we never even expected in the wildest dream. So, it's not an easy thing to go out and preach. And all, so Nityananda came back. He came back to Mahaprabhu said, that was pretty tough, they almost beat us up. So Mahaprabhu said, well, what can we do? The people have a free will and they abuse the free will. So the next day Nityananda hired us go out again. Then Nityananda said, hey, hey Haridas, what do you think? Shall we try Jagai Madai again? Can you imagine? Yesterday they wanted to beat them up. And now he said, and say, come on, let's try it again. <laughs> Maybe they're different today, you know. But here they went. Jagamadai, please, we have come again to remind you that you should chant the holy names and be happy. Get this real ananda, this real happiness, and, and stop giving trouble to your body. You know, every materialist is giving trouble to his own body. He's not only cruel with others, he's also cruel with himself. Alcohol destroys the neurons in the brain. Marijuana makes you lose the food on the floor under your foot. You start like going like a half ghost uh, uh, cloud being driven by the, the, the air. Uh, ecstasy and all this other stuff, it all makes you strange. There's a nice book out, what this is. This side effects of drug addiction. What was that? Was Archie was studying? Addictology. Yeah, the AA. They had a special course for those who are with people in drugs. Uh, ah, yeah. That big book. A A C A. Hmm? Uh, adult children. Adult children. Yes, that's where people, when you have a drug addict in your family, you have to become an expert and get the treatment yourself. Because by living with a drug addict, you become an addict of that circumstance. That, that's a big book, a big course you have to take. It's not sure if it's real. I read it. It's, it's, it's all reasonable stuff. So, so they went to the big drug dealers, Jagai Madai, you know. There were the drug takers and drug dealers, they were the they were really you no know, the last. And then Jagai said, hey, the same guys of yesterday. Can you believe that? Yesterday they were running and now they're here again bothering us. They come on, they're gonna teach a guy a lesson, right? Before we knew it, Mandai took some of the bottles which were lying there and he just went about whack! He wrecked Lord Nityananda over the head and blood was pouring out from the head of Lord Nityananda. So this is, this is a real story, you know? This is Nityananda's story. So, some of the people were around there and they had seen the entrance. So, somebody ran to Mahaprabhu. Nityananda was attacked. 
Niet zeggen, dat is het lied niet. Lord Chaitanya came storming. He was flying there. And he was with all the might of Lord Vishnu to chastise those who go against the truth. There's might. It's a divine might in this world. You know, nobody can escape the cosmic law. Nobody can escape it. The, the cosmic law is there for everyone. So, here the divine might came in the furious Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as he was coming, he already pulled his air, hand out. And Sudarshan was on his finger, the divine arm of total destruction power. He says, Who did this? This bright personality with this shining power and this disc on his finger ready to cut the entire world to pieces. I saw this. And he asked, who did this? Who touched Nityananda? And Madai was, <laughs> and Shagai, he was also. You know, sometimes you get afraid, even if you're a rascal, you know? When a certain might shows up, you, it's the end of your pride. So they were just like this. Mahaprabhu repeated, Who did this answer? And the Nityananda responded, who was bleeding. He says, Mahaprabhu, please cool down. You can't kill him. Because your mission is to give love to everybody. You are the Prema Purushottam. You're not the you're not the might. You're not the Mariana Purushotta. Like Lord Ram, who killed all the all the demons, even Ravana. You are the Prema Purushottam. So as Prema Purushottam, you cannot kill them or give bad image to our mission. Please cool down, don't kill me. So while he was pleading with Mahaprabhu not to kill Jaka in Mandai, he got a bright idea. He said, maybe it's time to surrender. <laughs> He said, maybe it's time to surrender. He said, maybe it's time to surrender. And, and some talk, some other this doesn't, doesn't talking experience. Because sometimes even after do dogs bite us, we don't learn the lesson. Uh, so, Madai threw himself at the feet of Nita. Forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, Nityananda, please. And when Jagai saw that, you know, there were not ordinary people, last but not least, there were, Nityananda was the last. So, when they threw themselves as Rod Nityananda's feet, and Nityananda pleaded for them, then Mahaprabhu cooled down. And the Sudarshan disappeared. And then Jaga and Madai, they were lucky. Because they saw the Sudarshan, they knew the sin was real. They actually changed. And they actually became the Buddha. So if you go to Mayapur today, you can go to Jagai Madai Ghat, where this took place. You can visit that place where the greatest addicts were saved. This is the Nityananda Lila. 
négy jelentet, ahol kicsány. And you see Nityananda, he makes arrangements, sometimes which we cannot really cope with so easily. But by Nityananda's grace, uh, he takes people like Latini, like Patrani, like quite a few others whose names I don't remember right now. He takes, makes arrangement for their transfer to the spiritual world. Well, Paramahansa Maharaj was not one of them because he died like a baby sleeping in Vindakutya happily <laughs> in Vashanta Panchami. There was no too many moments of difficulties, you bet. But he was rescued to be a Parma. Believe that? And he wasn't a young brother. He was he was fifty when he came to me or something, fifty more. And he had been a drunkard all his life, he had been drinking like and his liver was so shot that after he built the, the, the after he built the samadhi for Srila Harijan Maharaj because he was a housemaker, house constructor, and a bricklayer master to make houses. So after he made the samadhi for his Guru Dev, he became so sick, but because he changed his mind, he stopped being Chakai. He became Paramahansa Maharaj. This is not easy because, like sometimes you do, you follow the principle for last addictions, laziness. Laziness is one of the big addictions. In South America, we call it blooming portis. Over to another. No? <laughs> so, I, laziness has many faces, that I tell you. Srila Bhakti Balabdita Maharaj, our beloved Chicha Guru, he made the whole story. Do you remember all the cases? What about your memory, young man? <laughs> oh, God, you know. This is. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Not even. <coughs> the arrow. Yes. Yeah. The arrow. The yeah. You remember the arrow is what the, the guru says, Guru, my dear disciple, can you do this? The disciple says, Yes, Guru Dev. And he flies off like an arrow, but he never comes back. <laughs> <laughs> the service is not done. <laughs> That's the only one you remember? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Then there's the one who says, always me, always me, always me. Laziness means you don't understand. Laziness means you are a chapati devotee. <laughs> Only where's my chapati? <laughs> Prabhu, is, are there going to be chapatis <laughs> if I go there? Like, here in Vietnam we call them the Bandara devotees. <laughs> huh? They go every day and respect another Vaishnava <laughs> in another festival. So he was very serious, very nice. Oh, you make such a nice festival. Yes. Where can I sit down? <laughs> <laughs> They know, they have a calendar. This day, this is the Bandara. He's a big Bandara. Oh, <laughs> Bandara is Bandara. Yeah. Sometimes they also get a dodi or something. So, so this is not the general. I was giving this to you, the shloka. Seriously inquisitive means put your face in Nityananda. The good instruction. Nityananda's instructions are all there. not blind face. Blind face means you just follow anybody. Maybe uh, blind face is actually some kind of a prostitution thing. Like in in South America, you have to pay twice as much as the minimum salary. You will 
that is not a bad idea to make twice as much money, no? Only if you work. No? But you give pays this official price, you know. How much do the people in the guerrilla pay the guerrilla people? Yeah, it's a salary. And they don't pay taxes. So it's, it's clean. A clean that you get, you go to the guerrilla. That's what many people do. They have to do to pay everybody. You know. they, they, they can't be lazy. They got to be really involved in some really nasty stuff. You see, I speak like these things, like it's like oh, blah, 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 blah. this is the reality. This is the today, 2017 reality. That's how bad the things are in this world. So don't put your face in anybody, but put your face in Nityananda, put your face in love. For Gini Maharaj, I made something here, special. He's gone, huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, Jamalo. Uh, there's another shloka we should also take into consideration. Vanashrama vibhagasha svanushti tasya dharmasya Divisions of and orders of life is to please the Supreme Personality of God. Doesn't matter what duty you have. You have to do it with love for the Supreme. Isn't that a beautiful advice for life? It doesn't matter what duty you have. You may be a family man, you may be a renunciant, you may be a shopkeeper, you may be a constructor, you may be a musician. It doesn't matter. You have to do it for this divine engagement. Sang Siddhir Hari Toshada. Is Hari pleased? Vanashrama Vibhagasha. Swanushti Tashya Dharmasya. So, there is a division in the society. You have different divisions for the ashrams and for the varnas. Everybody has to accept that because it's, it's reasonable. Just like when you come to India, most of you came by plane. So, there's one caste today in the world. It's called the pilot caste. The, those days they didn't have pilots. Mm. They didn't have that, that title. But nowadays it's a pilot caste. And you expect a pilot in the pilot caste to do his pilot job good, no? Because otherwise how you can have a, a pilot who is drunk, who is, pilot cannot come an hour late for the flight. He, he was feasting last night, so he overslept a little bit. So the plane will leave an hour late, it cannot happen. Huh? Like you can miss a mangal art, but a pilot, he cannot miss a flight and he's not a devotee. But if he wants to be a pilot, then he has to be on time. He has to, and there's many tests of pilot. How reasonable, how intelligent are you to be able to do your job? But this world is a pilot. The father is a pilot, he flies the family. So for Giri Maharaj, the other day I made a little description. It's a little bit difficult to explain this to you here. Maybe Vishaka. In the center here, this is our blood family. Father, mother, brothers. So somebody's the pilot here of the family. And that means also the people living there, they have to relate to him. They have the analysis. Who flies our ten families? It's commitments and how we deal with different people around ten comes family. You can easily say so. A guru and his disciples, 
is a pilot with his with with the people who study under him. The teacher and his class, this is also a family. He is the guru. The teacher is also called guru. And even a taxi driver, when he when he takes your family or a group of devotees somewhere, then they become part of that taxi driver's family. Really the pro the, 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 the explanation is Ashraya, refuge. Who can take refuge under you? Well, in order for someone to take refuge under you, you have to be sincerely inquisitive what is their necessity. Example, the driver, taxi driver. Okay, come in, sit in. So where do you want to go? Okay, this is our address. Okay, now difficulty for you. This is his assignment. He is giving shelter to you. And all of you say, oh, thank you. Well, yes. So a bus driver, taxi driver, pilot, uh, a teacher. Whoever has others under his deep This is, we are all one family. Animals, humans, every living being is part of the Lord's creation, they are all one big family. And then the next family, number nine, that's the anthropocentric family. He said, we human beings, yes, we all human beings, we are one. What to do with each other? Not everybody has his own de design, somebody has a nose on the knee or something, like, like other species, no. We have same design, same model, variety of model, but same origin. So this is the number nine family. Now here, we go back to the center, my family. This is, so who is under my care? Father, grandfather, they have people under their care. And right after that comes second birth. Second birth comes from the guru. This is the guru's family. You take birth in the Guru's family. But in the Guru's family, there may be many families, like your Guru may have an ashram in, in Chile, another ashram in Uruguay. So they're a little different. They have a big distance, over a thousand kilometers of distance. So there is a family of the Sangha. This is our Sangha family. That means the people we live with. The one who are cooking in the kitchen, the one who's buying the boga, the one who's organizing the money's coming in, that this thing works, no? That's our family. And people living in this family, they have taken shelter in this family, and they also have their commitments in this family. Every level here has benefits and duties. Every and the benefit the duties, they're not by imposition there by affection. When you feel it, because even though this is a very extensive uh, description here, all these are the organizations which are in there, but they are all volunteer. They are totally volunteer. There's no imposition here. Only the original law. That is an imposition. Like we are born in this body, that was imposed upon us. We were part of it, that's the desire from the past life, no? Like you wanted to be half Greek, half Swedish, you know? I mean, he, he wasn't even satisfied with one country, he wanted to have a blend. So then you get the little kinds of nations and, and like that. But that doesn't matter at all. If, you, if we dedicate it, it's nice. You see symptoms. I can subject. You can, you call it the psychology of imperfection. The idiosyncrasy symptoms, they are like, oh, these people, they always take siesta. Huh? Well, they're from Italy, you know? How can you expect the Italians not to take siesta? It's part of their life, no? Huh? <laughs> in different places, they have different customs. So, so like, or tell the Uruguayan people, don't take mati. Hmm? or an Argentine, no? some of them, a very difficult job, you know. But they, they're almost like born with the thing in the mouth, you know. 
So, so like that. These are idiosyncrasies, but it's separate. Here we are talking about shelter giving and commitment. So here we have the, the guru's family. Guru family, there's symptoms. How do you know what's a guru family? Well, there was initiation, there's a Vyasa Puja, there's uh, certain things. The next family is the Vinda family. The Vinda family is bigger than the Guru family because in the Vinda family there are several spiritual masters. So the spiritual masters, they have their family, but then there is the all Vinda family, and that is another commitment. If you're a member of the Vinda family, then you have to defend what this is. So Nityananda Prabhu, he is the, uh, the original spiritual master, so he's the original shelter giver. That means behind every level of that, Nityananda has its pe peculiar instructions. Then after the Vinda family comes the Gaudiya Vaishnava family. That means all those who believe in Lord Chaitanya. We're, I'm going now to Calcutta to meet the Chaitanya Mela. All the people who want to give their respect to Lord Chaitanya will be there. Very important gathering, third time. This is something which was born from the Vishwa Vaisnava Raksha. It's a, it's a very progressive thing. We are so proud that this is happening. So proud, because we have been working 22 years for all the Vaisnavas to come together. But by the mercy of now Samyasi Maharaj and so, now the Vishwa Vaisnava Raksha is expanded into the Chaitanya Mela. So this is all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. They're meeting on such events. Hmm? Then, beyond that, is another family. It's called the Four Sampradaya, all, all those who believe that God is a person. They're called theists. Those who are declared theists. We believe in a higher authority. But it may be in the name of Jewish, Judaism, Christianism, uh, ancient tribes, doesn't matter. So that is another family we have, all the theists, so we are identified with them. Then, next to that, we are, uh, we are identified with the Hindu faith. This is our world religion. So we have a family of Hindu faith, but which is very vast. There's many things, and not everybody has the same opinion, but they have basic ideas, basic understandings. And that it again makes us a family. Like if anybody says, oh, I want to kill the Hindus, I'm going to be very upset. If it's in Bangladesh or doesn't matter where, very upset. So we have to have that solidarity and that love and that commitment. So the Hindu family then comes after that uh, is the United Nations of the Spirit. These are the people who want to take care of Mother Earth. Everybody who is really taking care of us, they have the universal love principle. But anyhow, they have a declaration, so we put this as another family. And then you got the, the human family and the... If you look, for example, I studied, what does that mean? What are the relation, what are our tasks? What is... This is the theory. What's our relationship? Then what's our task? How do we translate that? What does it mean to be a member of family? Or does it just mean, hello, brother? No. Then the next thing, what does it mean in the love? You know, one thing is the idea, one thing is the job, and another thing is the feeling. What do you feel in your heart? How do you get affected by this? The love. This is a the love is an analysis from the Uida therapy point of view. How much do you love somebody? How much you want to do things for them? There's no joking when you talk about love. Love is not just mm, I love all the people, but I never do anything for them. Yeah, you know, we forget about you. So then the next part is the organizational aspects. If you have acceptance of the families, what is your organizational connection with them? How does it work? Then the next one is 
the form of activity. This is, this is a little bit similar to this, but this is the formal one, and this is the uh, like idol, some idleness. And finally, here you have the type of family, and here, what other pro